Alright, hello everybody, and today we're going to be proving Euler's formula right here using Taylor series. So let's just forget about this e to the i theta part over here. We're going to come back to that in a second. But first of all, let's just replace all these thetas here with x's, just so things are a bit nicer to look at when we do the Taylor series expansions. But uh, yeah, let's just get started here. Let's convert cosine and sine into their respective Taylor series expansions. So for cosine, it can be written as a sum running from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the 2n over 2n factorial. So that's the cosine part taken care of. Now we have to add i times sine, but sine again we can represent it as a sum being from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. All right, and notice one thing here, both of our sums here are, are both running from zero to infinity. So instead of having two separate sums, we can rewrite this a bit as being one giant sum. So now this is the same as the sum running from zero to infinity of negative one to the n, x to the 2n over 2n factorial, plus i times negative one to the n, x to the 2n plus one, over 2n plus one, factorial. Okay, now we want to muck around with these equations a little bit. You see these negative 1 to the nth powers here. They just look so incredibly out of place because we have a 2n, a 2n in this fraction right here, and we have a 2n plus 1 right here, and a 2n plus 1 in this fraction right here. So let's take this fraction for example. Ideally, we would like this power right here to be 2n, but how can we get 2n? Well, remember that negative 1 is exactly i squared. So if we place negative 1 to the nth power with i squared to the nth power, notice that we can generate a 2n right here. So this is just i to the 2n. So we can actually rewrite negative 1 to the nth power as i to the 2n. So let's just do that quickly. So this right here becomes i to the 2n. And we can actually do the same thing over here. Negative 1 to the n, we can rewrite this as being i to the 2n, but for this fraction, ideally we would like 2n plus 1 right here, but we're still off by a multiple of i. But you see we have this i hanging out in front right here, so why not invite it into this fraction right here, so we'll have 2n plus 1 right here. And after we've done that, notice we have a 2n and 2n right here, so we can actually combine these two bases together. Similarly for this fraction, we have 2n plus 1. 2n plus 1, so we can com combine the two bases right here. So let's rewrite this a little bit. So now we have the sum running from 0 to infinity of i times x. Now this whole thing raised to the 2nth power over 2n factorial. And then now we're adding i times x, all raised to the 2nth plus 1 power over 2n plus 1 factorial. All right, and now here is where we have to really think about what's going on with this sum right here. You see, we're summing from n equals zero to infinity. So we're summing an infinite amount of terms. And if you have a look at this fraction right here, our index n appears here and here. But for both of them, they're being multiplied by two. So if we're summing from zero to infinity, this fraction right here is actually hitting all the even numbers because two n will always be an even number. And if you look on this fraction right here, both of our n's here, our index appears here, but we're changing it to 2n plus 1. So this whole entire fraction right here is hitting all the odd numbers from 0 to infinity. So instead of having separate fractions for even numbers from 0 to infinity and odd numbers from 0 to infinity, why not have a single fraction for every single number running from 0 to infinity? So we can rewrite this a little bit as being the same sum running from zero to infinity. So we're still summing up every single positive integer. And now instead of having two n's right here and two n plus one, we can rewrite this as being i x to the nth power all over n factorial. And if you run the sum from zero to infinity, these n's here in fact hit every single positive integer. And this in fact right here looks quite familiar because if we take for example, the Taylor series expansion for e to the t, that's exactly the sum running from n equals 0 to infinity of t to the n over n factorial. So right here, our argument will be i x and everything else on this sum is exactly the same. So in fact, we're going to get e to this argument, which is i x. So there you go. 
So uh, yep, that's pretty much how you can derive Euler's formula out here using Taylor series expansions.